What's up guys, it's Jesse from The Power of Adventure. I'm a solar installer and master electrician. And today we're gonna to be checking out a very unique project in an off-grid mobile art gallery. I'm gonna be traveling to Burlington, Massachusetts to install an off-grid electrical system in what will be known as the Burlington Micro Gallery. This is gonna be a really cool install, so let's get into it. So we'll try to keep this video as concise as possible. We're gonna break it down into four parts. One, the customer goals. Two, the system that we designed for them. Three, we'll do a quick proc feature. And four, we'll go over some tips and tricks and what we liked about the rig. This customer has an enclosed trailer that will become a mobile art gallery. Uh, they're going to house paintings and uh, sculptures and other various artworks. They're going to be able to move this trailer around their city to different fairs or events. What the customer wanted uh, essentially was everything a studio needs, uh, lighting, it's going to have an outdoor sign. It does have provisions for HVAC. And they wanted someone to design a proper system to be powered completely off of solar and battery storage. Every off-grid electrical system starts with evaluating how much power you're using and how long you need to use it for. So let's look at some of the numbers. If you guys hate math, bear with me. Uh, we'll go over this quickly, but it is an important part of system design, so let's jump into it. So to break this down simply, we're gonna break the electrical loads down into two sections, lights and air conditioner. Lights are what they like to cover now. Air conditioner is gonna be a consideration for the future. We have 10 lights that are 11 watts each, and if we use them for one hour, that's gonna use 110 watt hours. I approximated these lights to be on about 18 hours a day, so we'll take our 110 watt hours, multiply it by 18, and we get 1,980 watt hours for the day. They weren't interested in including the air conditioner for the off-grid installation, but it will be a future consideration. They installed a 700 watt air conditioner. I approximated it at a 75% duty cycle, which means every hour it's only gonna run 45 minutes of that hour. So 700 watts times a 75% duty cycle equals 525 watts at about four hours a day. So 525 watts times four hours equals 2,100 watt hours. Now we know our electrical loads, we can talk about our solar yield. So for this system, we installed a 1,500 watt solar array. The question is, will we get 1,500 watts of power from it? The answer might surprise you. Let's check out the numbers. During the summer, we approximated at about 80% yield. And for the winter, we do about a 50% yield. Hours during the day that you get solar, we approximated at four. Let's break down our approximate summer yield. We'll take our 1500 watts. We'll take 80% of that, which is 1200. We'll multiply that by four hours and we get 4,800 watt hours. Let's do the same thing for winter. We'll take our 1500 watt array, multiply it by 50%. We get 750 watts times four hours equals 3000 watt hours. So on a sunny day between winter and summer, you can tell that the numbers are drastically different between 3,000 and 4,800. Okay, so let's review. We have our lighting electrical loads, which are around 2,000 watt hours daily. And we have our solar yield, both winter and summer. Both are above 2,000 watt hours daily. What happens with the excess solar electricity? So this is where a lithium battery upgrade comes into play. Uh, this is going to allow us to store that extra solar power and use it when the sun is not shining. For this lithium upgrade, we chose two 300 amp hour epic lithium batteries. The way we like to size a lithium battery is to take your electrical loads and ask how long do we want to power them without a charge. The total battery bank storage will be 7200 watt hours, which will supply about three to four days without a charge. These batteries have an internal BMS that protect them from all the adverse circumstances that are possible. These batteries are also internally heated, which means there's no worry about using lithium batteries in the winter. They can be charged down to a temperature of negative four Fahrenheit. Pretty impressive. Okay, so let's talk about the inverter charger upgrade. For this system, we installed a multi plus two, which will mostly be responsible for taking our battery bank voltage and creating 120 volt power while off grid. This system could have actually been a little bit more efficient if we used DC powered lighting instead of AC powered lighting. The MultiPlus is also responsible for charging your batteries from shore power. That won't be much of an option for this particular install, but I wanted to make it viable just in case. And of course, there's a shore power plug on the exterior of the trailer. And that brings us to our product feature of today. 
we are going to be looking at a shore power plug shore power plugs come in three common sizes this is the smallest at 15 amp the next is a 30 amp and then the largest is a 50 amp Realistically, an off-grid system doesn't need a shore power plug. It has off-grid charging sources and a battery bank to store enough energy that's needed. Um, but we typically like to install one just in case. Let's say, for example, a snowstorm comes through and covers the panels for two weeks and inevitably the system will die. It doesn't have anything to charge it. With a shore power plug like this one, you can simply plug it in and it'll be the fastest way to charge your batteries to 100%. Whereas a solar array alone may take a few days or even weeks to get your batteries back up to 100%. One of the most important parts in choosing a shore power plug is to make sure that it has a UL listing. This means that it's gone off to a third party manufacturer to be tested for safety standards. And you're not just allowing the company that makes it to test it. Use all UL listed products in our installs and recommend that you would do the same. And that's our product feature for today. As with most of our customers, they really don't know how a solar system works. So that's why they opted for a remote monitoring upgrade. Uh, this allows us to keep an eye on the system, make sure that all the numbers and parameters are within their bounds, make sure that everything's working properly. What's really cool is I got to work with some of my union brothers through the city. Uh, they made it so our device would connect to their Wi-Fi network anywhere in town. As soon as it's in range, it will connect to the internet and upload all the relevant information from the system to the online portal. Uh, and that's when I can check it out. So really cool feature. The Victron system is so well at integrating in other people's existing systems. Something useful we added to this off-grid electrical system was a programmable timer switch. Uh, this can be really helpful for not only conserving energy, but other things too. Um, for this mobile art gallery, you really wouldn't need the studio lighting on at two in the morning. Uh, you'd probably be attracting the wrong crowd anyway. So for multiple reasons, it would be a good idea to limit what time the lights are on, and this could be a significant savings in energy as well. We do recommend charging these systems up to 100% every six to eight months. Uh, it helps all the equipment recalibrate. And this can be done through solar or of course shore power if the solar isn't actually getting it up to 100%. As I said, we were really excited to be a part of the project, but even more so, we're excited to see what the local artists do in the space. Though we've been doing a lot of work on RVs, it's really exciting to see how other people are using their creativity to implement an off-grid system in a really creative way. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. If you think that any of our services could be of use to you, you can find us at powerofadventure.us. You can find us on Instagram at powerofadventure. Be sure to check out the Burlington Micro Gallery and of course, thank you for checking out this video. We appreciate your time. We'll see you on the next install.